freely and voluntarily made like um, if the court is so inclined to do there is a part of the form at the bottom where the defense attorneys also have agreed they have discussed this with their client they agree with this waiver um, and so to inquire from both the defendant and defense counsel about the voluntariness the free the freeliness for lack of a better term and the knowing waiver of the right to a trial by jury I do have a waiver for you to consider. May I approach? Yes. We stand ready to answer the questions your honor has. Thank you. Let me read it. Yes, sir. I reviewed the waiver initial and signed by the defendant um, and Mr. Kirby, in this case, is his lawyer uh, for this particular matter. Um, why. Mr. Ibarra, I need to ask you, did you go over the waiver of jury trial and agreement to proceed with the Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Did you go over that with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Was it freely, knowingly, and intelligently signed and considered? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any questions about your decision to waive a jury trial in this case? No questions. Have you had enough time to talk to your lawyers about that? Yes, Your Honor. And do you understand that if I grant this request, it cannot be revoked by you going forward. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Do you see that? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Kirby, let me ask you on the record, have you had sufficient time to go over this waiver with your client? I have, Judge. And can you say collectively, uh, you and the other defense counsel, are you all in agreement with your client's decision uh, to make this election? We are, Judge. Is there anything else you think I need to know on this subject? Not about this matter, Judge. Okay. <coughs> Mr. Austin, anything? Um, may I inquire I know it may seem quite silly um, because the defendant is incarcerated, but stranger things have happened. Um, may uh, would the court please inquire to make sure that um, the defendant?
man's age and the fact that he's not under the influence of any drugs and or alcohol at the time today or at the time that he made that decision. And I'd also like to inquire, I understand that Mr. Kirby does speak Spanish, um, and I know that they um, went over the form and have discussed this with their client um, and uh, just want to make sure that he either did it in Spanish or with an interpreter or both um, when he discussed this matter with his client. Mr. Vara, are you under the influence of any sort of drugs or alcohol today? No, you don't. Were you under the influence of drugs or alcohol when you considered the waiver of the terms included in this form? No, you don't. Kirby, could you describe how did you translate uh, with the assistance of Ms. Smith, or how, how did you discuss this with Mr. Avaro? Uh, Judge, what I can tell you is that the form was uh, translated and we reviewed it with uh, Ms. Smith, who is an interpreter for the court. And then, were you present when that took place? I was. Is it your belief or understanding that she translated it to uh, your client uh, in an appropriate way? I, mean, do you have any I, I don't. Call? I don't have any reason to think that that was not done, Judge. Okay. And I ask you because I, I understand you speak Spanish. I understand, Judge. I, you know, without getting into my fluency of Spanish, uh, we brought Miss Smith in for a reason. I, I, I am not qualified to tell you exactly what those words were. It was it was reviewed just like in any other case with a certified court reporter and court interpreter. And we have stated that Mr. Barr had stated that he understood it. We have stated that we've gone over it with him and, and I'll leave it at that. What else, Ms. Ross? Um, that's it, Your Honor. Um, may the parties have an opportunity to discuss scheduling with the court, and that can actually be in chambers if it pleases the court. Yes. Thank you. Uh, we, we can discuss that. I also recognize that Mr. Kirby has filed a um, follow-up motion for continuance on the true legal issue. Is that true? That's correct, Judge. Right. I, I think that it would be uh, very similar to what we argued at the motion, but given the court's order on that, I have a feeling I know what the court is going to do. Uh, we just want to renew that motion. Well, and I, I understand your obligation to do that. I, uh, I, I can appreciate that. I, I think it's appropriate that if we want, we probably need to address that now on the record. Uh, have you had a chance to see that? I just saw it this morning. I, I did see it, Your Honor. Um, and the state's position on it, I, I think we have a little uh, factual disagreement about the timing of matters. I'll repeat my position on the motion to continue, or at least putting all of the dates in context for the court. Um, in the terms of the true allele DNA results in this case. So the very first true allele report in this case was issued in April of 2024. That report was not disclosed to the defense until the very first round of discovery, um, which came out in May of 2024. So as of May of 2024, everybody is on alert that this is a, that some of the results, not all of the results, because some of the results are traditional DNA, some of the results are YSTR DNA, um, but there are also true allele results in this case. Um, and so in May, everybody was aware that we have true allele results in this case. Um, the, the true allele testing continued because this case is not yet nine months old, so things were continuously tested. As things are tested and as reports became available, they were disclosed to the defense. The very last true allele report in this case was issued in September of 2024. It wasn't until the last results were issued in this case that the GBI could disclose and give to everyone, the state, meaning the prosecutors and the defense, the raw data that was produced as a result of the true allele testing in this case. And that raw data was timely uh, subpoenaed by the defense the prosecution in this case in order to assist the defense in order to get it quicker also filed an open records request because we're permitted to do that in an open case we worked together 
defense and prosecution as quickly as possible to make sure that they got the raw data as soon as they could. The raw data was produced to them in, in October, I think it was October 11th of 2024 is when they obtained the raw data from the true real results in this case. And so I put all of those dates to the court in context um, for the court to consider this ruling. But it was it was known in May of this year that we have true allele, and that true allele was part of the DNA testing done in this case. And I will um, leave the court with that knowledge and those timelines and defer to the court. Yes. And, and Judge, I, I, I appreciate the, the state's position, I guess, that we would have known that this was a true allele case. Uh, but in speaking to the experts and speaking to the attorneys that are more knowledgeable than I am about this subject, the, 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 the reports that are turned over to the defense, the, the one-page reports that give the results of, of those tests are not what experts can analyze. And so uh, I agree with Ms. Ross, and they were very helpful in trying to get that information to us. Uh, but the, the, the actual time that we have had the data that can be analyzed and evaluated by an expert is insufficient for us to, to have hired that expert or to have them have looked over. I, uh, I will deny the request for continuous based on what I've already stated in the previous order, but I understand your need to request it again. Uh, but I will deny that. Let me uh, state option to go into chambers and discuss uh, scheduling matters that would be all it would be uh, to try to figure that out uh, if there's something else um, I, you know let's talk about it down here obviously I'll give you a chance if you want to speak with your client to make sure he understands and there's no objection about us uh, recessing the matter in open court and Resuming upstairs and try to do, deal with timing of this. Yes, Your Honor. That works for us. That works for us, Your Honor. I, I'm just making sure that that has been uh, interpreted to the defendant so that he knows and he's okay with us going in the chambers to talk schedule. That's why I just related this bit. Uh, okay. All right. Um, I will, I, I recognize that there are people here that need to know about the timing, but I, I want to be able to have this discussion uh, in a meaningful way. Um, I will tell you, I will, you're welcome to stay, and I'll have a report back down here as to anything that's relevant, which I, which is the most relevant thing is going to have that in mind. So, um, I'll be glad to make that statement. Also, let me say, I recognize. Uh, I said this in my mind first started this morning. Uh, as you can tell, we're experiencing some, some, some significant physical uh, issues dealing with this, this plant, this uh, facility. Um, that um, I was, this is the best court setting that we have available in the courthouse today. Um, hopefully that will improve. Uh, but that's just sort of a day by day thing. Uh, I agree. I don't need to. And all of that started happening this weekend, too. So uh, certainly I know that it impacts all of you and how you come and go and what you plan on 
and that's the other thing that we'll talk about upstairs is where I think we'll be and how we can do that and that sort of thing. Yes, sir. So, all right. Um, let's see upstairs in 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Give y'all a chance to get there. Everybody remain yes, seated in the courtroom at the time, please.
juvenile court? Does she know we're waiting on her? No, she said that if she need, if we need to get her. Well, then did you get her? Yeah, yeah. Hands on, hands on. Okay, thank you. And our victim's family is coming down as well. She's down the way. stairs. Our victim's family is also coming okay. down. Okay, that's fine. Don't wait um, Okay, thank you. got some things I want to take up with the media, but is there anything else that you all have on your mind about that? No, yeah. Just for planning purposes on Friday, are we going to go to 5 p.m. or 6 p.m.? Five, but I will look for a natural break. Yes, I mean, sir. if it's, uh, I'll try not to stop in the middle of anybody's testimony. I'll try to finish up. I'm looking for a full day. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. I just didn't know if yeah. you wanted a full day plus. I'll probably go to six on Friday. Okay. Um, Friday is also, uh, there'll be other things going on in this town, and so people will be looking to get out of town and find a place to stay. It's anyway, so. Till five. Thank I'll you, sir. Find. Anything else we can do? Not for us, Your Honor. Okay. And y'all are welcome to stay where you are. I'm going to ask if you will tell, ask the, invite the media that is out there in the hallway to come in, please. Some things have been brought to my attention that I think you all need to hear that we're not going to have anymore. That is trying to talk with the, the defendant, trying to talk with the lawyers, trying to talk with the family, and certainly any witnesses that come around. I don't want any attempts at conversation with any of them in this courthouse. I can't control outside this courthouse. But I understand this happened today, and I don't know who it was. I didn't ask that. I will tell you, this is the first time I've had to make this sort of admonishment in the few times that I have dealt with this. Not just in this case, it's been pretty reasonable. It may be a function of the close quarters we have, but don't misinterpret that. It's still important for me 
to maintain the integrity of this process. So I'm asking and expecting you all to abide by that. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank you all. Court's adjourned. Everybody just remain in the courtroom just for a second, please.